Before we start off today's video, if you guys would like to join my Discord server, link will be in the description and it will also be in the pinned comment. But anyway, besides that, let's get right into today's video. What's up guys, welcome back to another video. This here is the Mazda CX-3. Now the CX-3 is a small crossover by, well it is technically by Mazda. I don't know where I'm going with this, but it's kind of in the same class as, you know, like a Mokka from Vauxhall Opel, you know, the CHR from Toyota. That sort of class of car, this is their answer to it. But anyway, besides that, on which I have nothing else to say upon, let's get right into the review. So, when it comes to the exterior, well it's a bit complicated but this bit is simple first. So I do like the design of this, the grill works good, I like how you got silver around it and then it goes into the lights, that definitely adds some, I don't know what it adds, it adds something. Lights are a decent design and the indicator does seem a bit low, it does seem odd there but you know what, can't really complain and the rest of the car, frankly, it looks fine by me. One thing I will note is that this car did have a facelift, but I can't seem to notice much besides the lights being changed. So I've not included it in the review. Front and rear lights have changed. I can't see anything else. But if you do, if you look on Google, then please let me know in the comments below. When it comes to the side, well, it looks decent. I mean, it's not terrible. It's not actually bad at all. I do quite like it. I mean, there's a bit too much black plastic for my taste, like on the door, there's a bit too much, but otherwise I have no problem. And the front, it does seem to extend a bit too much at the front, and then go back in at the bottom, and then come out again, but otherwise I have no problem with this. Something I will note is that the rear windows do look quite tiny, so if you are in the back, you may not particularly get much light from there. And apparently the rear visibility is also bad, so... That moves on to the rear anyway. Uh, it's, I mean, it's, I mean, I know it's not technically the Vox or Mocha, which is just a car. I mean, this is a car, but you know what? It's not bad. I do think that the boot lid could extend a bit lower. I think it's a bit too high. Lights, they're a good shape, and this sportier version does have two exhausts. So that does add a bit of a sporty element to it. Otherwise, I've really got nothing to say on this, to be honest. When it comes to the interior, I have to say I do like it, even though this photo is very far away, very, very far, probably a mile or so. But you know, it is reasonably designed, you know, the infotainment screen is in line with your eyes. The controls for the climate, they're not too low, because you are separated, which means controls can't go any lower than that. Something I will note is that you've got three circle air vents, one of which is hidden behind the left bit of the steering wheel. And then there's one normal shaped rectangle one that's literally on the left side of the passenger side that looks like there's no circle vent there at all, like there's no vent. But it's there. I don't know why Mazda do this. It's odd. Why? I don't know. But either way, it's not a terribly designed interior. And not only that, you could get multiple designs. So you obviously got this red and black stuff. You got all this white as well. Uh, you got this sway colour, I don't know what that is, and if there's any colours then well you got that as well. But here, you can clearly see here, you got a circle vent right there, and then the hazards, and then the rectangle one. Why? But when it does come to the performance, so you got one petrol engine, a 2 litre with no turbo, but this had 118 horsepower and 147 horsepower. I think one of them had a, one more horsepower something like that like 118 one had 119 at one point or something close enough anyway with the diesels you got a 1.5 litre turbo diesel with 103 horsepower and then for the 1.8 you got 113 horsepower the 1.5 litre diesel was on the pre facelift and the 1.8 was on the facelift so what we're going to do as usual is take one engine from each and then just look at the specs of those so when it comes to the petrol i have chosen the two litre inline four cylinder but that's the only one anyway, with 118 horsepower slash 119 horsepower, 152 pound feet of torque and this one is front wheel drive only, I think anyway, 
It does weigh 1,235 kilograms and has a 6-speed manual gearbox. If you get a 6-speed automatic, weight does go up by 30 kilograms to 1265. 060 is 8.7 seconds for the manual and 9.6 for the automatic. Top speed was 119 miles an hour for the manual and 116 miles an hour for the automatic. Wow, that's a lot of specs, isn't it? Reminds me back of the mocker, isn't it? For the diesel, I chose the 1.8 litre one, the more modern one. 113 horsepower and 199 pound feet of torque. This one weighed 1,295 kilograms and came with a 6 speed manual gearbox. Nota 60 was 9.6 seconds and the top speed was 114 miles an hour. Now I think there was a four wheel drive version but on the Parker's website I can't see anything with this four wheel drive, I only see this 1.8 with one trim level. So if there was one that came to the UK let me know, or if it didn't come to the UK and it was in different markets, again please let me know because I went short and I haven't included the specs of it if that's the case. But anyway, when it comes to the practicality, well, the boot was 350 litres big, and that was on par with, well, pretty much every other crossover there was. However, if you got the subwoofer, which you could get on, I believe, the high spec models, it does drop to 287 litres, and that, frankly, is, well, tiny. So, if you get the subwoofer, well, say bye-bye to the boot space, but otherwise, you're alright, it's on par with the others. When it comes to the rear seats, the legroom was rather tight for the taller person, but on the other hand, the headroom was decent enough because obviously the body was a bit taller than, say, another Mazda, which is based on, which I'm not gonna say, but, okay, I'll say it anything else, but I'm not gonna say it now. When it comes to the handling, it actually rode decently well, well, riding first, forget about the handling for a second. Obviously it is a family car, it's obviously destined to ride well, and well it does, it's very composed, body roll is limited, which is definitely good through the corners and making sure that your passengers don't get sick. When it comes to actual handling, it actually was quite good, one of the best in class, I think one of the articles said that, I can't quite fully remember, but either way it handled really well, it was composed, yet again not that much body roll so control was definitely there steering was definitely precise enough for this kind of car and well it wasn't limpy you know it actually showed itself off basically honestly I don't know what else to say about the handling it was decent enough for you not that you're gonna throw it in a B road and say okay handle now show me what you got you know maybe the odd person here and there otherwise any other people no but either way, it handled and rode decently well. When it comes to anything else, well, the car that this car is based on is this, the Mazda 2. Now, I was not expecting this when I looked up on Wikipedia. I was expecting it to be based on the bigger Mazda 3 because, well, A, Mazda 3 and CX-3. And also, because it's quite a bigger car than the Mazda 2, sort of Mazda 3 size, I thought it'd be based on the 3 platform, but either way, it's based on the Mazda 2, based on another Mazda, it doesn't really matter. It's in the same way that I used to think that the Hyundai iX20 was based on the Hyundai i20, but it's not, it's its own separate platform. It's not its own separate platform, but I thought it would coexist with the same number, model, name sort of deal. But anyway, when it comes to the verdict, the pros are it has good exterior looks, good interior looks, different interior designs, different engines and power outputs to choose from, it had good handling and a good ride, headroom was decent, it had a decent boot without the subwoofer and it did have four wheel drive as an option if you wanted it. But the cons, there's actually only two that I can think of when looking at this review. The legroom is tight and the subwoofer does take up space. Otherwise, I don't really have much of a problem. I can't really include one air vent being a different shape in this. Um, besides that, that does conclude the review of the Mazda CX-3. If you would like to check out my reaction channel. Directions. Write as many words with the same pattern. U-C-K. Truck. Buck. Tuck. F-word. <laughs> at least it didn't actually spell out. Frankie. I earn money at home by. I don't. I'm a freeloader. 2 plus 2 equals 4. I can do math. <laughs>
Street Fighter. <laughs> it's out of my throat, that love. That would be great. Link will be in the description below. I have taken a bit of a break from the reaction channel, but you know what? There'll be videos here and there. Could be a long one, could be a short one. Who knows? But just don't expect the usual every Sunday thing. Now, normally I blow a car and get you to guess it. I know I've said this. I, you know what? I'm not even saying it anymore. But someone on my first car review, the Peugeot 207 review, someone said, Hi, I've been looking at the Peugeot 308 2008 for a while. I really like it, but I would like your take on it as well from all different aspects of the car. I presume they mean the 308 from 2008. This is the problem when you name a car. That's also the name of a year. Like 2008 is also the name of a year that's been. I mean, 5008, we haven't been there. But this, I mean, I presume he means the 308 from 2008, I bloody well hope so, I've asked him, no reply. But, you know, if I get it wrong, then unfortunately it's wrong, and the review will be up there, and I'll end up doing the modern 308. Yeah, depending on what this person wants. But anyway, if you have a car you want me to review, then let me know in the comments below, and I've asked you to let me know a few things in the comments below. But anyway, I'll see you guys in next week's video. Peace. Bye. <laughs>